when Sarah goes up here, I'm going to be your host, your face, the mustachioid man running around this event. My name is Jalapeno George, or as they know me on the south side, Jorge Jalapeno. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We got a fantastic event for you today and tomorrow and Sunday. Three days jam-packed with lots of great things. And for the enthusiasts, the fans, there's a little bit of everything. I Trust me, it is gonna be a great time. Now, of course, we can't have this event without you all, so big round of applause, everybody, right now, let's hear it. All of you, our fans, our enthusiasts, our members, our pass holders, thank you for joining us for our second annual Roller Coaster Rodeo. Now, of course, this event also couldn't happen if we didn't have such a special person working here at this park. And I know some of you already know who I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, y'all know. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for our park president, Jeffrey Seymour! Now what makes this event great is, as Jorge said, it's you guys, and it's also all the surprises that we've been working on for the past year. As you can imagine, as soon as last year's event ended, our team began feverishly creating what you're about to see these next three days. But it wouldn't happen without just a lot of great work from those folks in the back. You see our marketing team, our entertainment team, please give them a big round of applause for the countless hours. They're basically working a 40-hour work week in the next three days. And they've been working all week. Plus, give a big round of applause to the folks that food equals love. Our catering team and culinary team is going to make sure we're all ahead for the next several days. But as you heard, what really makes this event special is the fact that we do it for our friends, family, and fans that are here in the audience today. That's why we all work so others can play. And as you know, when I'm not here, I'm riding rides right next to you guys. In fact, anyone that was at SeaWorld last night saw that I was riding Texas Stingray and a whole bunch of other rides with everyone else because that's, that's what we do. When enthusiasts are in your blood, it is just absolutely in your blood. And I've been a member of ACE since 1991 and have been traveling across the country world finding what the heck is the best rides and attractions that's out there and to bring those innovations back to Fiesta Texas and Six Flags. So without further ado, we're gonna begin with a very exciting presentation of what the heck we've been up to. Maybe a few additional surprises at the end. But of course, anyone that has seen my presentations knows that we're not gonna answer a whole bunch today. But tomorrow, as you have seen, there is a great behind the scenes tour that you are not going to want to miss of Dr. Diabolical's cliffhanger. And anyone that, has, who's met Dr. Diabolical? Have you met her? She is not a nice lady. She is not. She, she is not. And you know she's not. That's a lie. Everyone that thinks that she is nice does not know her very well. She is not a nice lady. There's nothing good with her. So luckily, we try to keep her away from all of this because she does not like it when we're around her machine. Doesn't like us walking around it, doesn't like poking around, doesn't like us to see anything. But of course, we're going to reveal a lot this weekend. But what the heck have we been up to? We've been working on all kinds of improvements leading up for our 30th anniversary. One is you came in the gate, hopefully you didn't touch it because the paint is wet. <laughs> the paint is very fresh and it is still going on, but we're working on our 30th anniversary look really nice and fresh as we continue to paint and scrub our way through the entire park. It's been amazing all the detail that our entertainment team is actually putting in all of our buildings. If you have not noticed, look up as you go to Los Festivales, you'll see a lot of gold leaf and gold paintings that they're doing as part of our Los Festivales makeover for the 30th anniversary. The big new 30th at Texas State Square. Theming everywhere. Who loves theming? <laughs> As you know, we've been going themed area by themed area, ride by ride, attraction by attraction, reigniting the storytelling of Six Flags Fiesta Texas. So every themed area is being reimagined, and you'll see that as you work your way around the park. Of course, Crack Axle Canyon, where it is 4th of July every day, it has a great 4th of July patriotic look. Our flags are flying. And who wrote Miss Kitty? Anyone ride Miss Kitty today? Well, our beloved train is almost 100 years old. She began in, I want to say, 1926 as a coal train in Pennsylvania. 
Had another short stint after that before coming to Fiesta, Texas in 1992, where she has served us very well today. She has all new wheels, new engine. She's been given so much love, and today is actually her debut back on the rails. So please make sure you give her some love and appreciation, because it's great to have that 100-year-old train rolling again, just in time for Roll and Rosa Rodeo. You work your way around the park, our beloved Rockville area, the Hustler has all new neon, and the actual name chases back and forth. Pete's Eats has all been renovated, lots of paint, lots of scrubbing, new themed signage around the park for all the different themed areas. Our train stations have both had a makeover. If you go to the German train station, it looks like you're about to travel through Germany. If you go to the Western train station, you'll see it's all steampunk themed and inspired to continue on with the exciting and storytelling. If you have not seen our beloved Poltergeist, has anyone not seen it? I kid you not, I had a guest last October that she said she's been coming here for almost 30 years since the park opened, and when did we build this ride? I go, it opened in 1999. She goes, there is no way this ride opened in 1999. We've come here almost every year, and we've never seen this ride. So it's amazing what a fresh coat of paint will do for an attraction. And who picked out the colors? You guys did! You guys actually picked out the colors, which is a great midnight gray and a good phantom green that glows ominous at night. So who's ready for some good nighttime rides on Polka? Really a great form. But not only that, we took advantage to retheme the ride experience. And like many of you guys, my first visit to Fiesta, Texas, I was all excited because it's got this great haunted house facade. And then you go to the station, you're like, what happened here? Where, where's the rest of it? So we finally enclosed the station, created the graveyard, created the fun haunted house experience that makes it a much more exciting and dynamic ride experience. And then during Fright Fest, we actually had a series of caretakers that work the line and greet our guests with ominous fog that goes rolling through the queue, just making it more fun and immersive. But a theme park or an amusement park is not itself without that second word, which is park. So we've really reignited the landscaping and improvements as you've worked your way around the park, literally adding tens of thousands of plants this year into the park to really make it look spectacular. Here's just some of those earlier shots this spring when our team is going through. You'll notice flowers, 30th anniversary logos, dates all around the park. If you're standing in front of a Rockville theater, you'll notice to the left it reads 1992 in plants, and off to the right it reads 2022. If you're across from the train station in our German Spasburg area, you'll see that the flowers actually have a big 30th in it as well. But there's lots of fun landscaping around the park, so huge congratulations to our team. Really making the park look beautiful and spectacular for all seasons. There's an example of our 30th in the flowers as we celebrate this year. Even our front entrance area, our company that uh, manages our front area got in and out as well and redid all the landscaping as you came in. And of course, our signature waterfalls that greet you at the front entrance. But as part of our theming, our beloved Sanger Fest Hall, which is our main food location, we've been re renovating it now for quite some time. Hopefully you've gone into the dining room. You'll see that it actually is beginning more of a German-esque Fest Hall feel to it. You can see the bottom right is what it used to look like, the bottom left. Lots of new food options. Brand new chicken, calzones, salads, um, really, really upscale and good food that is in that area. But also when you go inside, you'll notice that it is also continuing to be renovated. When you come back tomorrow, you, or if you go there today, you'll see that our team is installing new themed light poles, a lot of different themed decor, and tomorrow there's a signature fountain in there that will actually be turned on for the first time. So the fountain will actually uh, be working tomorrow afternoon. If you go to our back 50s area, we renovated our Primo's Cafe, so now it looks more like an actual Italian restaurant. And we're also changing the menu to start offering more pastas and additional food options as well. For those that never saw it, that's what it looked like on the left, and now you can see what the renovation looks like on the right-hand side, just creating a more fun themed experience inside and out. Even our Dippin' Dots are getting into the themed action. The Dippin' Dot location on the left, and our new steampunk look on the right-hand side as we can try to continue our storytelling. Lots of new chairs and seats around the whole park, benches, shade, even our queue lines. We've gone back and gotten rid of all of our old stanchions and themed every queue to match the themed area. So if you're in our western area, you can see the western that's out there. You go to Los Festivales right out in front of us, you'll see there's nice bollards and other things that just really help carry the storytelling and the theming around the park. Benches. Lots of benches. <laughs> Who loves to sit? I know, I love to sit. So we ordered more than 96 benches, hundreds of actual benches around the park. If you go out to Los Festivales, you'll see there's yellow benches that are going out. Tomorrow there'll be new blue benches that go out. And we're continually adding more and more seating for our guests around the park just to stay in shaded. Cabanas, 
resort loungers, you name it, we've tried to just add more and more shape. But of course, the big news for our 30th anniversary is... I'm sorry, what is it? That's right, Woo, Kitty Coaster! That's right! And by the Streamliner! Feel the terror of Streamliner! Nearly at an eight degree angle of horror! But we have this! This beautiful monstrosity that we've been working on with our friends at B&M, which again, as you can imagine, through the pandemic, we heard for the past 10 years, oh, we'll never have a B&M again. Six Flags will never have a B&M again. Oh, they're getting access, which actually was one of the final rides that we were looking at for our 30th anniversary. But this wonderful monstrosity definitely won out and will become an instant fan favorite. And it is filled with innovations. Those that have seen this presentation or different presentations, there's actually three different versions of the ride that we were working on with B&M. And each version we wanted bigger, more exciting, and more dynamic. And this is actually where we ended up with all the fun superiorities of the ride. When we were working with B&M and we submitted what we refer to as client feedback or client input, I polled many of you guys in this room. We actually did secret research under different park names and different areas throughout the industry to come up with what was our wish list. What is the enthusiast wish list of things that we would want in a fun coaster? One was the steepness of the drop. And I truly thought when we supplied the list and the request to Sophie at B&M that we, were getting, we would get back the, no, we can go 90, no, we, we're not gonna do this. And exactly opposite happened. They came back with an enthusiastic, absolutely, these are all things that we can do. So the first feature, we have the steepest B&M on planet Earth. First time ever that B&M is going beyond vertical at 95 degrees. And if you've been following our posts, in order to accomplish that 95 degree drop, there's actually another piece of steel that actually goes underneath the underside of the track. So the train is really locked and grabs you over the top of the drop, which really will be fantastic. So you're gonna have the 95 degree drop, followed by a very cool and intense element. So you're gonna go from weightless to high G load immediately back to weightless at the top, which if you've been out there, you'll see that our team is finishing up installing the safety netting for loose articles that are, that's being installed now. You're gonna get kicked out of that, soar above the crowd, and then you're gonna come to a very fun zero G roll. Who loves zero G rolls? Who loves the zero G roll on Iron Rattler? Believe it or not, that is not a standard zero-G roll. If you actually go to Roller Coaster Database, you'll actually see that this is a kind of a, a divergent, if you will, of it. It actually changes its radius throughout the inversion, which just makes it feel different. It offers more weightlessness as you go through it, and it's just more physical experience. So you go from positive to negative, positive to negative. So it's gonna be a real fun floating experience before you dive back down to this high bank turn before kicking back into the mid-course break. And the mid-course break is going to offer another really fun, extreme drop. Then we're going to have the Wicked Bank turn, which should give you some fun laterals. And of course, the feature that I'm most excited about, which is the extreme airtime hill. Who loves airtime? Yeah. And my favorite comment to date, who's actually seen that element in person? Who's actually seen the way it actually looks? My favorite comment to date is from an enthusiast that said, I never thought I'd live to see the day B&M created an airtime hill that looks like Magnum. And anyone that's in the back of Cedar Point knows that it's, it is very similar. It is guaranteed to be the maximum weightlessness of the entire ride. So the first drop is going to be fun. All the other weightlessness is going to be fun. But this section and this feature is actually in our agreement to be the maximum negative G-load of the ride, which should be just really, really fun. But of course, what's the best way then to end the ride? With the greatest positive G-force. So we added a real cool signature helix, which the way the helix is designed is if you take a traditional elliptical or vertical loop and lay it flat. So it actually has a one-two punch. So when you look at the calculations of the accelerometer, you actually hit it with a spike in force, and then as it continues, you hit it with another spike in force. So actually the strongest positive G-load follows the greatest negative G-load of the ride. So as the ride continues, the force has actually become more exaggerated, which should be a lot of fun. This way the ride just keeps going, going, and going as you pop over the top of the hill. According to the calculations, how fast do you think you're gonna go over the top of the hill? If you said 35 miles an hour, you're correct. That's the calculation speed to go over the top of the hill. So you're gonna be flying out of your seat at that section. 
Then the yellow circle that you see is the last moment of additional fun and thrills, which why let the brake run go to waste when you could do another moment of airtime? So as you pop up into the brake run, you're actually going to get another moment of airtime before the ride comes to a stop. This is also a great part to show a little bit more about what the station would look like. If you've seen the station under construction, you'll notice that the flat sections are almost there. They're currently working on what are called purlins, which are the pieces of steel that are in the middle of all the rest of the steel that the roof actually gets attached to. And then about another week and a half, the actual curved structure gets installed, which will offer a really nice Victorian train station type of look to it to give it a real nice upscale feel to the station. So that will be uh, hopefully offering lots of shade and coolness, but also just look really neat. The trains. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Dr. D, when we unveiled the train, so the last event we had, who was your actually our last event for the train reveal? Was that fun? Yeah. Was it dramatic? Yeah. Well, wait till tomorrow. Yeah. So the train is different because it has seven, seven seats. And one of the questions I get a lot is, why the heck did you pick seven seats? Or good luck to operations trying to fill those seven seats. Well, there's several reasons that we chose seven seats. One, being the fellow enthusiast, there's very few coasters that offer a true center line ride experience. 99% of all coasters on planet Earth are sitting cheated to the left or to the right, you're not in the center. We have the fortunate advantage that we already have a ride that has a true center line, our beloved Wonder Woman, designed by Mr. Alan Schilke in Rocky Mountain. And we have another one, the first time B&M has ever offered a center line experience. So we wanted that, set, that seventh seat, so it really offers a cool experience. So I know I'm gonna be riding in that, and I imagine you guys would want to ride that seat as well just to feel the experience. And the other cool thing is a dive coaster just looks visually different. And what makes a dive coaster look different is just the width of that train. And so giving the seven seats just makes the train that much wider and that much crazier looking. So again, we know what these things look like being a fellow enthusiast, but if you're sitting at home, all of a sudden you see our TV commercial, you're like, what the heck is that thing? Especially when it does its special feature, which is hold you looking straight down 95 degrees at the top of the lift hill, which is fun in itself, the whole cliffhanger aspect of it. Widest train gives us the full center line seat. The other cool feature is because we did want that helix and other features to be tightened up, the trains can actually articulate and tackle in on themselves tighter and do steeper maneuvers and quicker maneuvers than any other dive coaster to date. So the trains themselves are juiced up. The super secret in this train design is the wing side of it. The most dynamic forces, no shot to you guys, are the outer seats. Primarily the back left and back right. There actually is a point in the calculations that that back right seat will offer its own unique moment of airtime when it enters the helix. The helix is supposed to be snappy enough that the seat actually will fall from underneath you as you bank into the helix. And according to the vertical accelerations, it actually shows a negative G line. So it's that type of detail that we really try to go and think, what would we want? Because again, I'm a fellow enthusiast working on these rides. What would we want? How would we want this to perform? Where every inch of this ride is designed to, to feel and perform differently than any other coaster that we've had and any other dive coaster. And I kid you not, every single inch, the front left, front right, they're all gonna offer really cool different dynamics uh, versus other rides. We're really gonna take advantage of that wing aspect of flipping from side to side, which should be a lot of fun. Plus the colors that you see. The other cool aspect of the ride is how many trains does the ride run with? Three, how many did we order? Four. When have you ever heard of a theme park ordering an extra train? We did, because we want to make sure that it's operating at max capacity all the time, thousand people an hour plus, to make sure that the line moves and moves and moves. The other cool innovation is how many folks have been on Velocicoaster, which, which is fantastic. It is a phenomenal ride. How many folks have been on Stevie? A few less. But one of the cool features those rides have are a pass-through locker system, which is fantastic. I mean, every enthusiast, we all love it, guests love it, it is just absolutely great. So, as soon as we ordered the ride, the next phone call was, how do we get that? Who can provide that to us right away? Because 
just the lead time in that was almost a year in itself just to get a pass through locker system. So if you've been watching our posts or Instagram or following Instagram, you'll notice that we have a pass through locker system. So it'll be free and complimentary. Play on your phone as much as you want during the ride line. You get through the pre-show. I did say pre-show. You get through the multi-layer pre-show, you exit the building and across their lockers, put your stuff in, go to the line, the ride dock, get off the ride, grab it out the other side, scan your ticket, scan your pass, scan your phone. If you or if you put your phone in it, obviously we'll give you just another ticket so you can use that scan and stick in your pocket come off. So you don't have to worry about losing anything. It'll make the ride loading much faster because nothing is loose up there. You'll put everything there and just get off on the other side. And again, we're excited to offer that as a complimentary service. The other cool thing is they're all going to be themed. They'll all be themed to Dr. Dabba. So speaking of pre-show, if you've walked by, you'll notice that there's actually a covered queue that is now installed. The other cool thing that we did is we did not just do switchbacks back and forth. Again, borrowing ideas throughout the industry. If you've done Velocicoaster, you'll notice that their queue system is actually kind of a entwined queue that wraps within itself, so you're never passing the same people really twice. So our queue will actually be modeled that way. You go through the outside perimeter, then you start working your way through the inside, you kind of kick out in the middle, and then you'll converge into the different lines. But you can see that it clearly goes into a building. Dun, dun, dun. Why the heck would we want to do that? Air conditioning. We've added tons of air conditioning in the building, which is great because, again, as you know, I don't know if you've noticed, but it gets hot here. <laughs> Especially those of us that grew up in Cleveland or northern areas. When it gets to 104 degrees, I don't care if my friends say it's a dry heat, it is hot. Which is another reason that during Roller Coaster Rodeo, all the cool things typically are at night. So we can all enjoy our nighttime rides and not be blazed down with the sun. But you see that there's a queue. And the queue then takes you inside. So what is inside? A hallway. Oh, yeah. Isn't that exciting? It took us seven years to design it. From the creators of all of this comes a hallway. And where does that hallway lead to? A door. And as our good friend R.L. Stein always says, every great story has a beginning, a middle, and a twist. And my friends, pun intended, it's a cliffhanger. Until tomorrow. But I promise that tomorrow you do not want to miss the tour. You'll hear that from a lot of us. Do not miss the tour. You'll notice the agenda has been updated. There's two parts to the tour. One is a construction tour on the site where you'll be walking in and around the ride in places that you'll never be able to in walk again because of safety fencing and other things that will be installed later. Then that tour will actually end back in this building. And if anyone likes drama, like we all know we do, it will be an exciting afternoon of fun thrills and more air conditioning after we're all sweaty from a tour. As you can see, plenty of room to space our stank out. So, please pick your seat now. Before I continue with the presentation, I do want to say huge congratulations to everyone in this room. We've sold more than 350 tickets, making this the largest roller coaster rodeo to date, only compared to last year. Almost doubled from last year. But that already does put it at one of the larger events that's hosted anywhere in the country. So, huge congratulations for getting us to 350 plus already. And I promise we will continue to make it worth your while year after year with the crazy ideas. So speaking of 2023 and beyond, who knows what this beautiful picture is? It's his new train. It's Iron Rattler, but what makes it even more exciting than it's the Iron Rattler? It's, a new it's train. the third train! <laughs> one of the challenges that we've had with Iron Rattler is one, the train is a great design. It's designed by Gershlauer. It really rides the rails very well. It's a beautiful train. When we were designing it, we basically asked our friends at Gershlauer, Anything that really doesn't need to be on the ride, please remove it. Extra handles, extra sides, take it all off. But the challenge that we have is it is a one-off train design. When they designed this, it was actually upgraded from the Texas Giant. And as part of that was a whole new cylinder restraint system that the ride was designed with, which works masterfully until it needs to be replaced. 
because it is a one-off. No other Gerschlauer ride uses the cylinders and the technology that Iron Rattler uses. So when it's time to order replacement parts, it's extremely long lead time under normal circumstances. Because of the pandemic and the supply challenges, or I should say supply challenges, we actually placed our order, knowing that our train was coming off for rehab in the fall of last year, we placed our order for restraint cylinders last spring. They come in July of this year. That's how long it has been. So we've ordered like 90 billion restraint cylinders. I kid you not, because we're like, we're never going to run this ride with one train again because it's painful and I apologize because the ride is so much fun and it's so disappointing when you have one train that sees 24 folks. As you know, that math doesn't work very good when you have thousands of people in the park and you got a ride that everyone wants to get on because it's great and it seats only 24 folks. So there are two solutions. One is we ordered, I kid you not, a bajillion cylinders that this way we'll always have them. But the real solution is, so when we do have to take a train off for rehab, to have a third train ready to go so that ride will always have two. I'm happy to say that this train will arrive before Fright Fest. So before Fright Fest, this train will roll in the rails and moving forward, we'll always have two trains. And a fun note, the head is completely custom. And I kid you not, when we ordered the train, the first thing Gershlauer shared was, you won't believe this, we just cleaned our warehouse and we threw the snake mold away thinking, oh, they'll never order another one of these ever. <laughs> so, in our rehab, we had to take our lead car off and actually send it back to Gershlauer so they could re-engineer and remold to create the same mold that you see today. So, it will be great to have that third train rolling and as you can see here is in their shops under uh, construction and process. Do you want more good news? Believe it or not, we have the most ridden boomerang in the system. It is truly a workhorse. It is truly loved to death. So it was time to give our beloved boomerang an upgrade. And do they offer upgrades to boomerangs? Yes. Well, absolutely they do. New train. New train. And here it is. New train. Currently in production is the brand new vest restraint system from Bacoma. And how many trains did we buy? Two, you bought two trains. Three. Now you're just getting silly. It's the heat, the heat is getting everybody. We bought two trains. This way also, the ride will always be in circulation. It will never have to go down six day weeks while the train is going through rehab. And the two trains will offer a fantastic and much upgraded ride experience with the new Vest Restraint system. The other cool thing is why just stop at the train? So we're upgrading all the equipment. So the days of the friction brakes are coming off and the ride next spring will receive a complete new makeover that has all mag brakes. So instead of a giant rattle, rattle, thunder, clatter, boom, 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 coming back into the station, it will now have the proverbial <laughs> So it should really make a great ride more enjoyable. So that gives you a little bit of a preview of what it will look like next year when we come to Roller Coaster Rodeo. We'll have Cliffhanger in all of its glory ready to greet you guys. Boomerang with upgraded new vest restraints and training, and of course the Iron Rattler absolutely running at max capacity. So with that, welcome. I'm so honored that you have chosen to spend these 104 degree days with us. I promise we will make it worth your while, if not in anything else, but the amount of food you are going to receive will be more than you could possibly eat, let alone all the other fun activities that we have. So, congratulations. Thank you for being part of our special 30th anniversary season. And it's with great pleasure, let me introduce and welcome back to the stage for even more exciting announcements, our very own Jorge! Hey! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for Park President Jeffrey Seaver! <laughs> Jeepers, creepers, he sure gave a lot away. <laughs> We weren't expecting that. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, a lot of great news, obviously. Uh, we have some fun things in store in the future. But just uh, for this event in general, for this uh, like a kind of rundown uh, for today, um, just know this lanyard is your lifeline, okay? So on this lanyard, you have all of your benefits that you have for this event. On that uh, lanyard as well is the QR code. So if you scan that at any point, we have our updated schedule of what we're doing not only today, but Saturday and Sunday. So remember, this is your lifeline. And another bit of good news, 
On the rides that offer Flash Pass, this is Flash Pass, ladies and gentlemen. So you will be able to use this. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, yes, always have your lanyard. Uh, we'll have team members around with either cowboy hats, mustaches, or otherwise that will be checking for this. Okay, so just have that. Now, like Jeffrey said, it is going to be a hot weekend. So we have uh, really tried to make you guys feel as comfortable as possible for this event. So for this event, uh, just across the street in La Terraza, uh, right next to our membership services, our season pass center, we will have a kind of base, a home base for you. All day tomorrow, it'll be open from 9.30 to 8 as listed on the event. Uh, we'll have waters in there, you can cool off in between events. It's a nice place to take a break. Yeah, so that'll be there for you. Yes, indeed. We'll also have, like Jeffrey said, an event in here. Do not, you do not want to miss it. I know uh, Dr. D was, was calling, telling her henchmen to to tell him to hush up, because tomorrow is truly going to be a special day with that tour and uh, that kind of little uh, secret reveal. Uh, I can't say too much, because then uh, I'll disappear and you'll never hear from me again. <laughs> now, we do have a few things as well. Uh, tomorrow at our cowboy breakfast in the Picnic Grove, our, uh, our, what we're calling our Rodeo Ranch, uh, we will have sign-ups. Now, last year, if you were a part of last year's event, we have a series of games that you can compete against to win fantastic prizes and not only that but bragging rights and this year we wanted to make sure that those bragging rights were real so we have teams of four can sign up and ladies and gentlemen i'm not supposed to show you this today but i'm going to show you you have a chance to win a custom made first second and third gold silver and bronze roller coaster rodeo belt buckle yeah these things are solid solid Listen to that. Now these things are, uh, you know, you can show this off, you can walk around with Fiesta Texas and you'd be like, yeah. <laughs> so these are, these are a bit of the prizes. We have some more prizes in store, some games. Now, that is a sign-up event tomorrow at our uh, uh, Cowboy Breakfast, so make sure to sign up for that. Now the Sharpshooter Challenge for tomorrow, that one's just for the generalized event. You can just enjoy that, so don't worry about any sign-ups for that. Now, uh, like I said, um, there are a few things on the website that have changed. Our events specifically have been listed off. If you've been checking, we also are offering a uh, block break tour tomorrow. Uh, sorry, Sunday specifically. Uh, it is a limited space event, and sale will, sales will end tomorrow. So make sure to check if you want to be a part of it. Uh, that, that purchase button is on the event page. It is a limited event. Uh, sized event, so you could uh, go up to the block break. It's a stunning view, another really great access point that you probably will never be able to access otherwise. Um, now, going into tonight's event, uh, we have our Friday Night Frights that starts 8.30 to 10.30, okay, after park close. We have Daredevil Dive, uh, Roadrunner Express, Iron Rattler, Yosemite Sam's, Wacky Wagons, and Foghorn Lake Horns Barnyard Railway. Now, uh, I did hear um, just when I was backstage that uh, Dr. Diabolical, uh, she was kind of roaming around the cliffhanger and she was a little angry at Jeffrey, so she might make an appearance, so make sure to seek her out for that event. Now, last, uh, just some, some things that were mentioned, the blue tickets, uh, the drink tickets, they're for drink tickets for our ERT. So once we get into our exclusive ride times, th that's when you can utilize those blue tickets in any of our uh, ERT time, okay? And then last but not least, just some housekeeping, of course, our wonderful staff here, our entertainment team, uh, try really hard to keep our venue clean and, and nice and pretty. So all of the popcorn, anything you brought in, uh, we do have trash cans out in the lobby. And that's, that's about a wrap up for today's welcome reception. Are y'all excited? That's what I like to hear. Now, of course, it's customary. Uh, Chris, our uh, marketing director, started this last year. You gotta say a big howdy. So on three, give me a big howdy. One, two, three! Oh, I don't know. Jeffrey's over here just kind of smirking. I don't, that wasn't that wasn't that great. Well, hey, let's try it one more time. One, two, three! All right, now everybody, everybody, try it with me. Stand up, everybody, stand up, everybody, stand up. Shake it off. This is gonna be a great event. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Yes, 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 yes. All right, now turn to the person to your right and say, "Well, howdy." All right, turn to the person to your left and say, "Howdy, howdy." These are the people you're gonna know and love for this roller coaster rodeo. So, ladies and gentlemen, one more time, let's hear for everybody for. Enjoy our Friday Night Frights and we'll catch you out in the park.